Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Nick Edwards from Unearthly Comics here. Super psyched to talk about our new graphic novel, Stilettos, on the Blurred Cast. So be sure to subscribe and comment and like this video and be sure to watch because we're going to have a lot of fun. You're now listening to Blurred Cast, presented to you by Blurredography. What's going on, everybody? It's me, Mark, and welcome back to another episode of Blurcast. And today, I have a very special guest. I have Mr. Nick Edwards on, and we're here to talk about his upcoming comic. But before we start, but before we start, I must ask, Mr. Nick, what have you been geeking out to recently? Oh, man. Well, first of all, Mark, thanks for having me. Super, super excited to be here. What have I been geeking out to recently? So just watch. I'm a huge X-Men fan, so just watch through X-Men 97. It's so good. So good. Magneto was right. <laughs> what else? I just read Dune um, because I really loved the recent two movies that we got, the Denny mm. New movies. So I just read Dune, which in a very surprising case, I actually prefer the movies way, way better to the uh, to the book. But the book was really. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which like never happens. The only time that's ever happened to me before was Fight Club. I really prefer the movie Fight Club to the original novel. Kind of felt this way uh, with these movies, these Dune movies. That's that's really, as far as nerding out goes, man, that's really all I've been doing. A lot I've been doing has just been writing and stuff. But X-Men 97 was just so good. I uh, I could not watch it. Gotcha. Same here. Same here. Um, Again, everybody out there, X-Men 97 review coming out soon. So stay tuned. So stay tuned. But we are here to talk about your Kickstarter. You have a book out, it is, or you have a book coming out called Stilettos, and it is, seems to be very interesting. So let's talk about that. It's a lot of fun for me and my co-creator, Scott Beecher, to make. It's a... Uh... It's a full graphic novel with original characters, original story, pure just independent art. It's uh, really, really exciting. The quick pitch is Showgirls meets the most dangerous game. So it's a revenge thriller that focuses on two young dancers that are just going through it in life. They're in kind of a, a hard time in need of of money which is pretty relatable and they get roped into dancing at a very high-end bachelor party that's being held at a, an isolated mountain estate and we'll just say that things are much more sinister at this bachelor party than they initially seem so our girls our heroines they got to rely on their wits and tenacity in order to survive and uh make it off that mountain in one piece both me and my co-creator were huge horror geeks so like a lot of uh horror and revenge stories stories huge influence to us but we're also huge comic geeks so things like sin city uh and like early ec comics uh are really really influential to us as well and so yeah we're, we're really excited about the book like you just said kickstarter campaign is running right now we're a little over halfway through it we uh in very exciting news, we hit our funding goal about a week ago, which is awesome. So yeah, whether we like it or not, there will be a book. We have we have to finish making it now. Uh, we don't really have a have a say in the matter, and that's uh, that's pretty cool. That's what's up. And again, congratulations on hitting your goal. And you're only at the halfway mark. It can only go up from here. So not only you know the book is going to get funded, uh, you got a little extra to play with and can do some other stuff with. So that's really good. That's really good when when you accomplish your goals. I talk to a lot of uh, artists and writers on here um and you know sometimes they don't make that goal um you know you can try to help them out as much as possible but sometimes so i get it it's so scary man it, it, yeah it, i know it, it, like just watching that you like you spend every day just like refreshing it on your phone and it's just like it is a scary time and so you know my heart goes out to anybody and everybody trying to do it uh like crowdfunding stuff it's uh it's it's not easy yeah it's not easy but when it comes to publishing your own comics it's kind of the way to go it's um from what i've seen and from what i've heard you know i haven't gone down that road uh but self-publishing uh the experience is just a lot better versus trying to go through a major or even minor publisher um and just kind of the headaches that go behind that i'm sure you probably got stories before we get into all of that i 
just want to ask, what was it like creating this comic, like uh, with with your artists? Um, how long have you guys been working together? How did you come together to even create this project? Scott Beecher, uh, he he's the coolest guy I know. He he's so he's so awesome. Completely self taught guy, which is crazy because he's just like so talented. He Scott and I met at uh, the North Texas Comic Book Show in Irving, Texas right before COVID in February, 2020, uh, like right before COVID lockdowns hit. He he was exhibiting at this convention and he had a bunch of his art out and everything. And I knew I wanted to write comics, uh, but I hadn't, you know, done anything real yet and at that point and so i just approached scott's table and was like hey man your art is really sick and so we just started talking about that and then we both very quickly like figured out we're both huge into horror and so we just started geeking out about that and you know we just exchanged information and we we're like let's keep in touch and so then I reached out to him a little bit after that, sent him some, you know, scripts I, I had written just like, hey, what do you think? And, and you know, so we went back and forth about that a little bit. And then he had this idea for a character, his own slasher that he had created, this this uh, slasher character named Gator Man. And he had an idea of wanting to do a comic about this character, this Gator Man character. And so we we worked together. He, he you know, hit me with all his ideas for this character and everything. And so then I went and that summer, COVID summer, summer 2020, I wrote a script that turned into our first graphic novel, which is called Gator Man Kills. And we did a uh, we ran a successful Kickstarter campaign for that book uh, in October 2021, which was great. That was the first time I'd done anything like that. And it was uh, that one was really successful. That that was awesome. And so we just um, we just really liked working together. He uh, Scott had been running his own independent comics label, Unearthly Comics, for about uh, 10 years now. And so after that successful project, he kind of brought me into Unearthly. And so now the label's two man band with me and him. And uh, this book, Stilettos, is our second attempt at making comics together. And it's going pretty well, too. And so I'm just, yeah, super, super fortunate to work with him. That's what's up. That's that's really amazing that you can find somebody and you just make such a connection with, you can vibe with and just make such uh, amazing, amazing work. I was going through the Kickstarter and looking at the artwork. The artwork is amazing. Uh, I watched a little video. I'm like, oh, this is really dope. I, I can't wait to actually see this come to fruition. So th I might be one of your backers. So we'll <laughs> see how that goes. So That's let cool, me man. ask you, uh, no problem, but let me ask you, uh, so you recently just got into comics because uh i don't want to say because of the world ending and everything like that but oh, yeah. this is new to you this is still all fairly new to you even though this is your second book uh what is your favorite part of creating a comic book uh, well i just love to write I, I i love to write like i've been i've been writing ever like stories and making up stories ever since i was a little kid like ever since i was old enough to hold a pen you know like i remember being a little kid drawing very poorly like drawing my own comic books i like made my own like little superheroes and stuff and like my dad would help me staple those comics together that i was just doing on printer paper and so it's just like i don't really know how not to write you know and, and so that that's definitely my my favorite part about it and comics are a really cool medium because you do get some of your people that like do everything themselves like write and draw and all that and I, I don't very know, hard. I, I don't know how you do that. I, 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 I can't, I can't do anything like that. And so for the vast majority of us, it's, it's a team sport, it's collaborative. And so getting to see my vision for like a scene when I'm scripting it out, getting to see that like filtered through an artist and that artist's skill and that artist's point of view on a scene and seeing, you know, what changes, what's different, what did I think about, what did I not think about? It's just like, it's it's pretty magical, honestly. Uh, it, I've, I've been thankful to work with the artists that I've gotten to work with so far. Speaking of your artists, um, I love asking this question. What was that experience like on your first book and even this book when you saw, you opened up that envelope and you saw ages finally, you're like your work like written out uh, that you had worked on, drawn out and just illustrated with his art style. What was that moment like? looking at the conceptual art and like the finished work and the inked work well what was that like so cool so so cool um it, it's it's the best uh because i mean i i think anybody who's written 
any sort of script or any sort of story has those like big moments that they like are basically writing the story for like, like th those things like, Oh man, when I'm, as I'm writing the script, like I really am excited to see this scene happen. And, and so getting to see those specific moments uh, become real and turn from just words in a script into like real art is it's so cool. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. So you kind of touched on this a little bit already about like why you just like comics, but for your stories in particular that you written, why do you feel like comic uh was or graphic novel, let's say, was the best route to tell that story? I really I I just think comics and like graphic storytelling there's so much creative stuff you can do with the medium that you just can't do with any other medium. And it's it's kind of timeless in a way, you know, like like the earliest forms of communication were out, outside of like oral communication were uh, people uh, painting on cave walls. And so for as long as human beings have been telling stories, they've been combining words and pictures to do stories. And that's all comics is, is just words and pictures. So I, I'll always have an appreciation for the art form of, of comics and for the medium. Yeah, as a, someone who was just has been a avid comics reader since I was a kid, I just always wanted to make my own since you brought up since you were a kid that's a good opportunity to bring up your origin story so let let us learn a little bit more about you and like what makes you tick in in the nerd space what were some of the things you like growing up uh within not only your favorite comics but like just in general what were some of your favorite things growing up that you still like doing now for sure i've always been a huge reader so ever since i was a kid i've been i've just always read a ton probably my intro into nerddom and just nerd space in general could probably trace it back all the way to watching the x-men animated series on fox kids uh when i when i was growing up and just thinking like this is the coolest stuff i've ever seen in my life and then that you know turned into batman the animated series and superman the animated series and justice league and all that and, and, and comics specifically though actually my first real comics that i think i ever read were the captain underpants books because oh wow yeah yeah um and those are you know books about two kids making their own comics and everything like that and it's just uh, those are those are great and so funny and then you know once i once i started getting into that getting into comics i just started going with my parents to they would take me to half price books and half price books would sell these just sar basically saran wrapped bundles of just back issues for like you buy like 30 for like eight bucks or something like that. And so I just started spending my lawn mowing money on old comics and just like started building up a collection. And, and I didn't even know, you know, what I was buying at the time. I was just like, oh, I, I need more of this. And so that just um, once the uh, once the nerd in me took over, it really never let go. What are your three favorite comic books you have ever read? Oh, God. <laughs> OK, OK, OK. I can do this. I can totally do this. It's uh, so OK. Best probably the one of the best things I've ever read is Saga by uh, Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. I could talk for hours and hours about how good Saga is. It's so well written the characters are so real and just so fully fleshed out so organic and the story is incredible the art is just like gorgeous and that's i think it's a story that also is could only be told in a comics medium so saga is number one number two it, it's a little cliche but i gotta say watchmen um it's just you know, it's it's pretty amazing uh, the the scope of the story and how dense it is and the the level that Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons or Dave Gibbons, excuse me, are working on in that book is just absolutely bananas. And so, you know, no no one no one's ever going to be able to to top Watchmen, I think, in just terms of like one standalone work. Um, and then 
I'll go a little off the wall. Number three, it may not be the best comics I've ever read, but in terms of personal influence to me, uh, it's huge. The uh, the X Men event from the '90s, the Age of Apocalypse, when you go to the <laughs> the dark, the grim dark alternate reality where everything is edgy and like just ridiculous. That was like when I was a kid, and I first saw like the image of Wolverine with metal stump hand and Cyclops with one eye and good guy Magneto. You know, I was like, like, it turned my world upside down and I could not believe it. And I, I still, I love all those comics. And so probably if I had to choose three gun to my head, it's gotta be some, some of those, uh, books for sure. But I could, I could keep going. That's like asking me to choose a favorite child. I don't even have any child. I just have, <laughs> uh, I just have comics. And so it's like, just, yeah just as impossible that that's that's dope I, I really like that um so it comics had such an influence on you uh growing up where do you think you will be without comics in your life like if you have never picked up a comic book or just never been influenced by them what do you think where do you think you would be Dude, I don't know. That is a crazy question. That's like what, like, I guess. So I'm I'm currently actually in the middle of trying to write my first prose novel, like without pictures, like uh, mm. an actual novel novel, um, which is so hard and is so intimidating. I guess I would have tried, I would have started trying to do that a little bit earlier um, if I hadn't gotten into comics. Besides that, man. I mean, I'm huge into movies and into music as well. And so I'm I'm sure one of those hobbies would have taken me over uh in a way in a, in the way that comics have. But that's kind of a I don't even I don't even want to think about that. It's uh that's kind of a crazy alternate timeline. No, I agree. That's actually a good answer. <laughs> uh, that's a great answer to that. With with that said, again, comics being such a huge influence on your life. And again, you're still fairly new into this. You're only about like four or five years into writing for comics. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, where do you want to go from here? Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. Where Man, do you go? Yeah. Yesterday's history and tomorrow's a mystery. And so there, there's no telling. I'm what. stealing that. <laughs> yeah. No, keep that one down. It's not an original. So I wish I could claim that, but it is, it's not an original, but it, it's true. So we never know what's coming around the bend, right? We never know what tomorrow brings. I, as long as I get to just keep telling stories and keep writing and, hopefully turn some of those writings into something real then then i'm happy in whatever sort of arena that takes place in wh whether that's to a bigger audience or, or to a smaller audience um just as long as i get to keep writing and if i'm telling stories that people dig and respond to positively then that's all i care about uh let's uh switch gears a little bit and i kind of want to know a little bit about your first book and your first kick car uh kickstarter your first kickstarter project that you worked on what was that process like because it was your first time and you didn't know what you needed to run a proper kickstarter campaign i'm sure you ha were nervous doing the whole process of like writing and getting work back and getting everything together and then once the book was out it was like a huge sigh of relief and then like going out meeting fans and marketing the book what was that whole experience like you know, like your first time going through all this super surreal and i i was i was just super super fortunate that i had scott there to kind of act as like a big brother figure to just keep me steady because yeah i i was mad stressed um the whole the whole time it was yeah pretty wild as the project progressed and just thinking like oh my god i'm gonna like this is turning into a real thing this is actually gonna be like a th this is real and so that that was crazy the the campaign went really great honestly uh we for that one we actually hit our goal uh in five days which was really cool and did uh, uh was a little bit quicker than this new one interestingly enough but uh, it, it was just cool people really liked the book and it that our first book gator man kills it, it's a really fun book scott and i you know we wanted to make something that was pulpy and grind housey and like an homage to 70s and 80s slasher movies and so the, the book is very much like that like we we always when we do the quick pitch for that one it's texas chainsaw massacre meets con air 
Um, mm. it, and so it, it's a really fun story. Uh, and I had a, I had a lot of fun writing it. Scott came up with a lot of cool ideas. And so it was just, we're, uh, excited to go back to that character someday, um, and, and do maybe some more stuff with Gator man, who knows, but, um, it was a super, super positive experience. That's good. That's good. That is good. And what was your favorite part of that process? Just going through it the first time. Well, kind of to go back to the question that you asked earlier, you asked what it was like seeing like my story and my words kind of turn into art. And so, mm. you know, being a being a slasher story, there are a lot of gruesome uh, like kills and a lot of violence and everything like that. And Scott and I had a lot of fun imagining those situations and, and those like that kind of uh, content, those kills, everything like that. And so getting to see some of those pages, some of the really like juicy stuff that we were like laughing about talking like, oh, it'd be so crazy if we did this. And then getting to see like a dude's head get chomped by a bear trap, you know, it, like it, it was just, uh, <laughs> it, it, it was just, it was cool, man. And I'm, I'm so grateful to Scott for that. Uh, I know I keep probably sounding like a broken record when I, when I talk about him, but I just like, wouldn't be wouldn't be doing this who knows where i'd be if he and i hadn't become friends so uh, i'm very fortunate that's that's really that's really dope that's really dope um i'm so happy that it like it worked out because like uh, again um i hate to sound like negative but like so many times i hear horror stories from writers and artists and like their experiences working together uh with each other or um their experiences doing kickstarters and fail campaigns it it's tough out there and it's rare like um you uh getting your funding in five days that is so rare uh that it doesn't happen like that so I have to ask you, what are some tips and tricks that you can share with everybody who is trying to self-publish and running other Kickstarters? Uh, what are some tips and tricks you can share to get, you know, funding? Uh, the number one thing I would tell everybody, this was something that I had to do, is swallow your pride and don't be afraid to ask people, people even outside of the comics sphere. So your friends, your family, your just like the network of people that you know, don't be afraid to market yourself to them. I don't I don't think either campaign that we've done so far would have been successful without my without support from people in my life and people in Scott's life. Uh, so just don't don't be too proud to uh, go to people in your life for help. Um, another thing is there are tons of comic professionals who are who put on classes of how to run Kickstarter campaigns. So for our first one, the uh, there's a Marvel Comics writer named Greg Pop who has done a ton of books. Uh, I mean, you know, he writes for freaking Marvel. So he's like, he's the real deal. And he put on a like Kickstarter secrets class that I went and attended and took like so many notes on. And that was really helpful too. gave uh, me like a, at least a, a vague idea of what to expect. So just, yeah, keep yourself open would be, would be my number one piece of advice. Keep yourself open to outside knowledge, outside understanding, just teachings of people who have been, who have done it before. And again, just don't like, don't be too proud to ask for help from people in your life, because ho hopefully we all have people in our life that want to help us and want to chase our dreams. And I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm in debt to everybody in my life who has helped me so far. That's, that's some pretty good advice right there, actually. You know, I want to, I don't, you know, a lot like, and I, I've, I've met, I guess, some creators who are, who are just who say things like who don't give real advice when people have questions like that you know it's right. just like people who say like oh if the if the art's good enough or if the story's good enough like people will find it and people will want to read it and nowadays with how honestly kind of oversaturated the crowdfunding market is with people who are trying to do this exact thing make and sell independent comics and art it, it's right it, it's hard to get noticed. It, it really yeah. is. And so you just gotta, you gotta do it yourself.
yeah, you got to do it yourself and, you know, you got to grind and promote and just, again, like you said, don't be afraid to sell yourself and show your work and just be proud of what you have done. Mm -hmm. um, that's even a lesson I have to learn. Ke uh, Kendrick Lamar, who is one of my all time favorite artists, he said, and I'm going to uh, right after I say that, I'm going to I'm going to butcher this line. But he has one line that um, I really, really like that I think in humble where he says, um, I let my soul speak. You let the meds talk. And, um, mm -hmm. I think there's another, Oh God, who is it? Uh, Toro y moi. He's another singer that I really like. He says, people tend to listen, people tend to listen when you show your soul. And so I think just like being genuine and, and speaking from the heart, uh, that's what's going to get people's attention. I agree. I actually 100% agree. Um, just from my own personal journey and what I'm going through now, you're you're right. You are absolutely right. Um, all right. I got one last fun question to ask you before we end the show, because again, you're such a comic book nerd. So I just got to ask you, um, if you had the opportunity to work for one major publisher, who would it be and why? Uh, Marvel, because I could then write X-Men. And uh, that would be awesome. Uh, I think so. I guess there's there's two answers. If I if I wanted to work on some pre-established IP, then Marvel, so I could do X Men. But um, if I was trying to tell an original story, uh, probably my goal would be to my like dream goal would be to somehow go back in time and and publish a story under the old Vertigo comics imprint that ran at dc forever because i just like there was so much awesome storytelling happening under that imprint and the day that it disappeared was a very sad day for me personally i mean you know we had like preacher sandman 100 bullets um so I, I could keep going so many more amazing foundational stories and series and so that's just you know totally an impossible goal at this point but it, i do i do think about it from time to time vertigo comics might be my roman empire i don't know that that's interesting that is very interesting we are at the end of the show unfortunately i would like to thank you uh for coming on and before you go uh i like to have all my guests just kind of get up on the soapbox and just talk about anything that's close to their heart uh whether it's positive or negative anything that you want it doesn't even have to relate to what we talked about just whatever you feel like needs to be spoken about this is your opportunity well first before i go into that let me just say mark Thank you for having me. This has been a uh, super fun, really awesome conversation. So uh, it was a it was a privilege to be here, and um, I, I hope we get to do it again sometime because that'd be oh, really definitely. cool. Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, my soapbox. So I'll I'll just say this: nerds, and I say this as one. I say this a, as a nerd. Nerds are impossible to please a lot of the time. And we can be very persnickety, I guess, about things that we care about because, you know, everybody's got their favorite character, their favorite series, their favorite movie, their favorite story that they are very passionate about in this community. And that's what makes this community so great. But there can be a lot of gatekeeping as well. And there can be a lot of people, especially like old nerds who look at a lot of new fans as like the enemy and, and who remember what it was like like you know I'm, I'm not that old but i even remember taking comic books to school and kids like you know making fun of me and being like why are you why are you reading that stuff and now we live in a world where you know marvel movies are the most successful media franchise ever that's crazy that's like crazy and like numbers wise dollars wise that's statistically right. true like it has being a nerd and being into like superhero stuff or being into anime stuff or whatever, it's never been more mainstream. And a lot of people take that as a loss, but I take that as we won, like nerds won, like our stuff is what people talk about. Our stuff drives the economy Our like, like our things have permeated the culture in every single sense. And so we won 
and we're going to continue to win because it's not like any of this stuff is like slowing down anytime soon. So let's just be cool to the people who are discovering it now and coming into our space ra rather than gatekeep, because the more people who like our stuff, the, the better, the better it's going to be, the better it is. And I, I really, I really do believe that. I absolutely 100% agree with you about that. Um, Cause like you, I'm a older millennial, um, and I remember the time where it was just not cool to even be in the nerd stuff. You had to be a jock or a cheerleader or yep. play an instrument, do something you couldn't, you know, especially like within my community, it was like, definitely you couldn't do that. And then all of a sudden like around uh, the late nineties, early two thousands, it was a little thing called Dragon Ball Z that changed ah, everything. Man. Um, it, and then after that, it was like, it started to be really cool to be in the nerdy stuff and you can still be in the sports and you can still be the music um and all this and that and then like as time went on as the 2010s came along anime became like a excuse my english a fucking gateway drug <laughs> to like just everything that i love um and just more people kept getting into it and into it and it's so popular now the only thing that i wish i i will admit that i'm a little envious of the new generation coming out is that they get to enjoy the things that they like without the bullying. Well, I mean, there's still bullying and things like that, but like they don't have to get picked on for liking Power Rangers or Sailor Moon or being in the comics or uh for or cosplaying or mm -hmm. any of that. Like, you know, it's you're weird if you aren't into that stuff. Yeah. And and that's probably the only thing I'm a little jealous about. Um, because I had to grow up in that world where like I still miss all my Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards that got thrown in the trash in high school, just like sitting there playing Yu-Gi-Oh and then like, hey, look at those nerds yep. whoop, straight in the trash. And I was like, Oh my god, hundreds of dollars wasted. Um, I'm still salty about that. Again, um, haven't gotten over a certain eleventh grade trauma, but still that, that's so real, bro. That 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 is so relatable. But no, it's never. There's never been a better time to be a nerd than than today, right now. Right, right. Nerds are eating good. Content creators are eating good. Uh, whatever like your niche is, you're eating good right now, and it's only going to get better. It's going to get oversaturated, but it's going to get like better. At least like you're going to find representation out there for yourself. You're going to find something you're interested in by somebody. Um, like you said, like, yeah, you, you know, don't be afraid to market yourself because like how is you're going to get your stuff out there and notice um, you're going to have to push yourself out there. So, yes, we are eating good right now. Just yeah. wish it happened 20 years earlier. You know, man, you uh, brought up DBZ, uh, which I love so much, um, love so much. Man, it, can we just shout out Akira Toriyama really yeah. quick? Uh, um, yeah, yeah like that i haven't had a, a celebrity if you even want to call him that but just like i, I haven't had a, a notable death of of someone that i didn't know in real life affect me like that in such a long time uh his his passing was extremely tragic because yeah dragon ball z it it, it changed the game man it yeah, was it, uh, it changed the game um r.i.p to toriyama and mm -hmm. just think toriyama for everything because i don't think like you said with comics like it's such a hard question to sit there and figure out like where you would be without it i don't know where i'd be without dragon ball z i don't know where i'd be without uh goku charging up to go super saiyan for the first time and it took three weeks for him to go through that transformation <laughs> and i watch relentlessly five o'clock every day mm -hmm. like is he gonna do it he's just mm -hmm. going ah, and i'm sitting in the living room going ah, me and my dad and my cousin we all go, ah. like mm -hmm. come on let's go let's go but like like you said like yeah toriyama was hard loss um stan lee was hard loss for me chat with yeah. bozeman prince yeah. michael jackson um kobe um it's been a lot man it we oh we lost we lost some real good ones man um yeah yeah man if we start talking about prince we can we can just uh, we're gonna have to i'm gonna have to go off video because i'm gonna start to cry uh oh that's, yeah that's a, definitely that's a that's a real one um if you ever catch yourself in or around uh minneapolis check out paisley park it's the prince estate slash museum it's a whole museum based around Prince. It's the coolest museum I've ever been to. 
Oh yeah, I'm very familiar. It is on my okay. to-do list whenever I can start traveling again and just do some stuff. But yeah, that's on my to-do list. Again, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was an honor just to have you on. I appreciate it. And I know this was kind of like a quick episode and I know you got to go, but I would definitely love to have you back on. But before you go, let everybody out there on the interwebs know where they can find you. All right. Well, yes. Thanks again for having me. Uh, and I'm very excited to do it again. But you can, like I said earlier, I think my label, me and Scott's label, were Unearthly Comics. Uh, our website is www.unearthlycomics.com. And you can find us on Instagram and Twitter, I think, although we, we never use twitter anymore but uh we on instagram we are at unearthly comics all one word all lowercase uh so yeah find us there we post a bunch on instagram and check out the website and you can order some of our books and stuff off our website that's what's up also just a little side note i'm so glad you are the fourth interview i had in a row that refused to say x and they just keep calling it Twitter. Uh, thank you for being on that bandwagon. I Absolutely. love it. Um, fuck Elon Musk. Fuck and Elon Musk. For everybody out there. Sorry, kids that's listening. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for everybody else that's out there, this has been Blurred Cast. I'd like to thank Nick Edwards for uh, Nick Edwards for being on my show. Uh, you can listen to Blurred Cast everywhere you listen to podcasts like Google, uh, Amazon, Spotify. That's uh, formerly um, Anchor. Yep, there we go. Old script. And yeah. uh and on YouTube, and you can watch Blurredography on YouTube and follow me everywhere, Blurredography across the board on all social media platforms. Uh, this has been a great one. Please check out Stilettos when you can, and peace.